Welcome to Gastro Vision. I am here to bring you clear and concise videos on gastroenterology, hepatology, endoscopies and endoscopic ultrasound. Whether you are a student, a resident or a practicing clinician, here is your go-to source channel for practical insights and fundamental learning. Let's get started. Today I am going to discuss endoscopic ultrasound. I will be discussing various difficulties we face as beginners during endoscopic ultrasound and how to overcome those difficulties. And I will be discussing GE junction station in an approach based manner. Today I will focus on transgastric approach via aortic root. Let's start. So what difficulties you come across as a beginner? First one is scope handling. Scope handling is a very important part of endoscopic ultrasound as small incremental movement can have a large impact on EUS image. Second one is removing artifact. Removing artifacts is an art in endoscopic ultrasound. For learning this art, you need to have a good knowledge of artifacts you may come across during endoscopic ultrasound. There will be a separate presentation on artifacts in endoscopic ultrasound. Third one is image optimization. It is final and the most important part in endoscopic ultrasound. For this again, there is another good presentation. In that presentation, important parameters like frequency, depth, focus, pulsed repetition frequency, tissue harmonic imaging that are used in endoscopic ultrasound are discussed. After having a good knowledge of artifacts and parameters and a guarded control on scope handling, you need to know basic points in endoscopic ultrasound. First, always try to use endoscopic ultrasound image as your guide rather than endoscopic image. As you know, length of transducer attached to the distal end of your scope is around 1.5 cm. Means your EOS image is not what is your endoscopic view. For example, if you see a lesion on endoscopic view, that means your transducer will be distal to it. For getting the lesion in the EUS view, you need to withdraw your scope second. Air is the enemy of ultrasound. For getting a good EUS image, you need to suck air, try to bring transducer closer to the lesion by moving your big knob towards you and by immersing water. Rule number three. This is rule of 360. It means if you want to go from point A to point B in endoscopic ultrasound, you have two routes. Either you take short anticlockwise route of 90 degrees or long clockwise route of 270 degrees. Now let's understand a basic concept in endoscopic ultrasound. For the sake of simplicity, I have categorized beams emitted from transducer into five groups. Tip beam, shaft beam, central beam, right beam and left beam. Tip beam is emitted from the tip of transducer and shaft beam constitutes beams emitted from the shaft end. Central beam from the center, right beam from the right end of transducer and left beam from the left end of transducer. Each group analyzes the region adjacent to it and are displayed accordingly on the screen. But you should remember one important thing here. Tip beams are displayed on the left side of screen and shaft beams on the right side. The image given here depicts how a structure near the tip of transducer is displayed on the left side of screen. Similarly, right end beam is displayed on the right side and left beam on the left side of screen. You may get confused here by this. Tip beam is displayed on the right side and right beam is also displayed on the right side of your screen. How to overcome this projection artifact? You can get an idea of exact position of structure of interest only when scope is in your hand. You can appreciate change while doing rightward movement, leftward movement, pushing, pulling the scope and accordingly you can get a good idea of exact position of structure of interest. Rule number four. While vessel tracing, remember, veins appear oval and may change shape 
with compression while arteries remain round or tubular. Rule number five, always choose a home base as a reference structure like any artery or vein as they are easier to identify. Choosing home base, it helps us to identify structures in an approach based manner. And by this way, you can get a broad and clear view of structures without missing important information. Now let's start endoscopic ultrasound at G junction station via tra trans aortic route. In this route, I will take aorta as a home base or reference structure. As I have already mentioned, I will divide this approach in steps right from neutral position at G junction station. First step is identifying the left lobe of liver and the left hepatic vein. The liver has a peculiar echogenicity which you can pick easily. While your scope is in neutral position, resting on your left hand and while you are pushing it downwards and downwards, a point reaches where you will be able to visualize liver echogenicity and this part of liver is left lobe of liver because transducer is actually facing anteriorly and the waves emitted from the transducer analyze the structures anterior to it which is left lobe of liver here. Also, you can get an idea of segments of left lobe of liver here. Like when you are moving downwards, initially second segment will, it will be in your range of view, followed by third segment on further pushing. You can also identify structures like hepatic vein, portal vein in neutral or near neutral position here. You can see portal vein as an anechoic oval structure with hyperechoic wall attached to a hyperechoic curvilinear structure on the left side which is ligamentum teres and on the right side of your screen you can see hyperechoic wall of portal vein contiguous with another hyperechoic curvilinear echogenic structure which is with ligamentum venosum. Hepatic vein is also seen here as an anechoic oval oval structure without wall hyperechogenicity. Now, once you start rotating your scope clockwise, you will start identifying hyalur structures because they are on the right side of your scope. You will start noticing them appearing on the right side of your screen. And once you move further rightward, these structures move from right to left of your screen, depending upon the beam group, which is in their range. I have already mentioned the significance of beam groups. Here I would like to simplify it again. Initially, hyalur structures were in the range of right beam group, so they were on the right side of your screen. But when you rotate your scope clockwise, the hyalur structures are now in the range of central beam from the transducer. Uh, on further rightward rotation, that is clockwise rotation, these hyalur structures come in the range of left beam group. They appear on the left side of screen. If you see this as whole, you will be able to see the structures moving from right sub side of your screen to the left side of your screen. While you do clockwise rotation of your scope, I will not discuss much about identification of hyalur structures here because there is a sub that is a separate route and it will be discussed in another topic. Here in this topic, my home base is aorta. So I will continue rotating my scope clockwise till I see a large anechoic tubular structure at around 180 degrees from the neutral position. This anechoic structure on the right side of your screen is aorta. You can also note this anechoic structure extends from the right side of your screen to center and a bit towards left also. Here, I would like to remind you of the concept of tip beam and shaft beam. You go back to see where I mentioned tip beam is displayed on the left side of your screen, the central beam in the center and the shaft beam on the right side. Since aorta is a long tubular structure that will come in the range of shaft beam, central beam and the tip beam. That's why you can see it extended from left to right of your screen. You can also notice another tubular structure that is celiac artery budding off from aorta towards the transducer that is from posterior to anterior. 
because my transducer position right now is 180 degree from neutral position meaning I am actually facing posteriorly towards aorta. If you push your scope slightly downwards, you can see another tubular and echoic structure arising from the aorta. Again, the direction is posterior to anterior because you can see origin is farther from the probe. This structure is superior mesenteric artery. Now, if you slightly move your big knob away from you, you are actually straightening your transducer and the tip of the transducer starts picking up structures that are inferior to it. You will notice a structure which is homogeneous and slightly hyperechoic than liver. This structure is pancreas. You will see it appearing on the left side of your screen because it is the it is in the range of tip beam. If you continue deflecting your probe away from you and simultaneously advancing it distally, you can see pancreas moving from left side of your screen towards rightward because once you deflect and advance, it starts coming in the range of central beam followed by the shaft beam. When you see pancreas in the center of your screen, this means you have advanced your scope up to the level of pancreatic body. You will also see two anechoic oval structures in relation to pancreas. These are splenic vessels. If you analyze it, you will notice these structures are partly inferior to the pancreatic eco texture on the screen. Remember, your acoustic waves from the probe are from anterior to posterior. That means the structure farther from the probe will be posteriorly placed and the structure closer to the probe will be anteriorly placed. Here, these structures on screen are inferior to pancreatic ecotexture, meaning they are farther from probe. We can say they are posteriorly placed in relation to pancreas. Another thing you will notice here is that they are on the right side in relation to the pancreas on the screen. This means these structures are near the superior border of pancreas because when central beam of your probe is at the level of pancreas, the structures that are close to the superior border will be in the range of shaft beam. As already mentioned, structures within the shaft beam range appears on the right side of your screen. Now you have visualized body of pancreas and splenic vessels. At this point, you should know what is the position of your probe and in what direction sonic waves are emitted. Let me remind you, my transducer is at 180 degree from neutral position and I am directly visualizing pancreatic body. At this point, clockwise rotation means probe facing towards pancreatic tail. So at this point, what will be in my range of view? If I analyze thoroughly, in my shaft beam range, there that is on the rec extreme right, there will be spleen, which appears as slightly more hyperechoic structure than liver. In my central beam range, that is in the center of screen, there is left adrenal gland, which is a sagal shaped, predominantly hypoechoic structure. In my tip beam range, there is that is on the left side of my screen, you will see kidney shadow, hypoechoic cortex, and anechoic medulla. At this point, you are facing towards pancreatic tail. Since normal position of pancreas is slanting with tail of pancreas a bit superior as compared to the head region. Therefore, for visualizing distal most end of pancreas along with hilum of spleen, you need to pull your scope slightly and move slightly big knob towards you. By doing this, probe flexes a bit and splenic hilum comes in your angle of view, in your range of view. If you flex it more and more, you can visualize it, that part of spleen which is a bit higher than hilum. Now, at this point, you will start anti-clockwise rotation and gentle push. While doing so, you will be able to visualize again the body of pancreas 
along with splenic vessels. On further anti-clockwise rotation, you can actually trace splenic vessels till you can see portal confluence. If you analyze it here, you can see splenic vein in the field range of shaft beam. That's why you can see it on the right side of your screen. And portal vein in the field range of central beam thereby appears in the central field. Superior mesentric vein comes in the range of tip beam. Therefore, it appears on left side of screen. Now you keep rotating gently anticlockwise and slightly push down. Now your transducer is actually facing head of pancreas. Now on analysis, you can see acoustic waves traversing body of pancreas, then to superior mesentric vein, then to pancre pancreatic head. That's why you can see part of pancreatic body clo closer to probe, followed by superior mesentric vein, a bit inferior to body of pancreas on screen, and then pancreatic head, which is inferior most part of on the screen. Now, in the, this head area, you will search for two tubular and echoic structures by gently pushing your scope, combine it with slight lateral movements. Among these two tubular structures, the one closer to transducer is pancreatic duct and the further one is bile duct. Because pancreatic duct is anteriorly placed in relation to bile duct. Now, at this point, you will start withdrawing your scope. Again, you can visualize superior mesentric vein in the field of tip beam, thus appearing on the left side of screen and portal vein in the range of central beam, thus appearing in the center of screen. On further withdrawal and gentle deflection of big knob, the transducer straightens a bit. With the result, portal confluence again comes in central field. But if you analyze it, in this position, bile duct also appears in the tip beam group, but it will be farther from the probe. On further withdrawal, you can trace portal vein and bile duct up to hilum. Bile duct will appear farther from probe when you are visualizing it from the stomach. So, this is all about transiotic route. Hope you enjoyed the video. I would love to see suggestions for better comprehension of such videos. Thank you.